island of Madeira is in the same latitude as the deserts of Morocco and Arizona, so it's usually hot and sunny, a sort of Portuguese canary island. Unsurprisingly, it's a favourite destination for the drivers of the European Rally Championship as they gather here for another coefficient 20 round of the series. Armin Schwartz started flat out in the escort, but bad luck was waiting for him on this first stage of the day. He hit a rock on the right rear and gave the suspension a big knock. Though Schwartz continued to push hard, he lost a minute in the stage and collected a two-minute road penalty. Starting the stage, two minutes behind him, Aguini never saw the damage Ford on SS1, and he was going well. Fourth fastest on SS2, third on SS3 in what amounts to a works Toyota Corolla. The big surprise was Lopez in a privateer Peugeot 306 kit car, the local man flying through the stages. On the limit all the time, he was the early leader with a car that's 95% the same as the works cars. Andrea Navarra had a flat tyre on SS3 and lost 32 seconds, dropping him back to 10th place on the leaderboard. Jose Carlos Mathado is another privateer with a near works car, running third on the leaderboard. Lopez was fastest on five of the first six stages, leading Panizzi by a margin of 10 seconds. Not bad, considering that Panizzi is a world-class driver. Now Panizzi had to go flat out if he didn't want to be looking at the wrong end of a 20-second margin at the end of the first day. But Andrea Reghini leads the championship and victory here would strengthen his grip on the title. Lopez also wanted victory though and he wasn't going to give it up easily. Everything was going perfectly and he continued to drive on the limit everywhere. Mathado was 49 seconds behind the leader, though he had almost no problems during the whole of the first day. And Miguel Campos was sixth and hoping to end the rally in the top five. Armin Schwartz was trying to put the escort straight again, but after that big contact with a local rock, it wasn't an easy task, especially since there was really nothing left to fight for anymore. At the end of the first day, the drivers returned to Funchal for the overnight halt, and at 7.30 next morning, they began day two in the mountains, on wet roads and in some thick mist. Rally leader Lopez started as fast as day one, but had to go over the limit to stay in front. He was equal fastest on the three first stages, with Andrea Roghini the man to beware of. And he planned to attack now, when the wet hill roads suited the four-wheel drives. Clearly, the two-wheel drive cars were having traction problems, as he expected. Miguel Campos had already lost one place, and it seemed the rally would be decided this morning. Navarra knew the small cars were in trouble with traction, and he went for it 100% as well. But then, leader Lopez failed to appear at the finish of the super-fast SS22 with its flat-out section over the crest of a hill. With his lead cut by 20 seconds in two stages, he was flat out at 200 kilometers an hour when he lost a wheel and rolled seven times. The catastrophe was immense, and Peugeot withdrew when they heard the news that two spectators had been killed and four injured. Gilles Panizzi also withdrew, though the rally continued. Now it was an easy victory for Aguini, who would have won anyway, and would have preferred it to end in well-earned triumph rather than tragedy. Behind him, Mathado was second and Azaredo third, but it mattered little by comparison. This is a rally that's enjoyed by the whole population as well as the drivers, and usually means a three-day party that holds the whole island in its grip. Andrea Aguini defeats the local heroes to take victory, but the accident to the Lopez Peugeot makes it a hollow one indeed, and out of respect.